My talk today is around the experience we've had in Creme Global over the years of building data analytics for companies in the food sector. And we've really come up with the, um, the kind of philosophy, I suppose, or the, the thesis that data analytics in the food industry, as in all industries really, is a team sport. And let me tell you why, why we believe that. Um, so, without further ado, you'll all be so familiar with the amount of data that's just exploding in industry now and in business, and the food industry especially has all of this information just coming from the web. So, think about your own business. Are you tapping into everything that's going on around your brand and your products on the web? You know, you have mobile devices now. Everybody has, has a supercomputer in their pocket that's always on, connected, generating data. Social media is exploding. You have the share econ sharing economy. You have crowdsourcing. All of these new trends just generating massive data. And then on the last one on the bottom right here, we have the open source community, which are springing up really powerful data management tools and also generating massive data. So nobody can deny that data is just growing exponentially, and you'll all recognize that from being in the IT industry, in uh, working with the food sector. And some statistics that I've heard, and you can always disregard these statistics, but they say that less than 4% of all data that gets generated ever gets analyzed. And that's a huge waste, obviously, in terms of all of that information and insight which is available in the data, but it's not getting extracted. And the main reason for that is just, uh, it's just so much data. It's coming from lots of different sources. It's stuck in silos. Organizations don't have the expertise. And because of just the ex exponential growth of data, even keeping at that 4%, if it is even 4%, is going to be a huge challenge, and also, but also definitely a huge opportunity. And I think people are really tuning into that opportunity today, and that's why I guess people are here to talk about IT in the food industry. And a lot of the talks I've seen so far have already been talking about data. There's a number of companies talking about how you're you know, capturing data and using that data. And we're going to the next step and really trying to show, well, how do you do data science on top of data? And that's a kind of scary concept, because um, what is data science and, and how do you get started in data science? And we're here to kind of maybe show the way a little bit. So let me tell you a little bit of Creme Global, about Creme Global for those who haven't come across us. We've been around since uh, 2005 and we spun out of Trinity College in Dublin and what we were doing at the time was applying kind of the latest technology and risk analysis to the food safety sector. So we, set, we, we created some software which allowed us to use all of the data which was being generated in the food industry around consumers, populations, what they're consuming, demographic information. Uh, contaminant data coming from different monitoring programs and bringing this all together for the first time into a model to allow people to understand risk and food safety. And since then, over the last 11 years or so, what we've been doing is gathering and curating data sets from all over the world. And a lot of, a lot of these data sets are open and generally available, uh, published by different research groups. Sometimes you have to apply for the data, but it's accessible. But the problem is, it's in all different formats. Some of it will be CSV, some of it will be SPSS, some will be in PDFs, believe it or not, and you have to scrape it out of the PDF to actually use the data. So that's a job in itself and a barrier for people to get started using the data, even though it can be free. Other data sets we've been gathering directly from industry, so I suppose we've become, we've become the honest broker for a lot of different industry sectors, like the pesticide industry in the, in the US and the fragrance industry globally. And what we've done there is managed to aggregate data from all of the industry players. And these companies are sharing data because, firstly, it's not really competitive data. It's around chemicals, usages, you know, percentages used in different products, etc. And they need to get a global view of the market so that they can protect consumers and ensure that the regulators don't come in and set regulations at a far too conservative level. So the companies are starting to collaborate and share data. And they won't share it with each other because it's proprietary. Uh, you know, they're, they're worried about the data. But they will share it with us in a sort of anonymized fashion. And what we're able to do then is bring all that data together into an application for the whole sector to use. So that's an interesting concept that's arising these days in a lot of industries where the companies are starting to share data 
uh, because it's in everyone's interest to have a global picture of the marketplace. And it's not that necessarily competitive data. It might, might be around regulation or around safety or around health, but it's not on the real cutting edge of their business, like their, their strategy or their marketing. So companies are starting to share data. And we, as an organization then, are trying to bring all of that together. So if we've created portals where they can upload spreadsheets, and we can immediately ingest that data into a platform and start producing um, analytics on top of that data. So what we've done is a lot of web-based development over the years, and we've created interfaces where it's quite quick and easy then to go in and start asking questions of that data on a global basis. So we've curated the public data with some proprietary industry-provided data. We've purchased data off some marketing companies like TNS and Kantar, brought it all together on behalf of different sectors and industry and allow them then to ask questions about the data and get the kind of level of detail out of the, these models that was never possible before. And this is, for example, one of the fragrance models we've created for the industry. And we, we were able for the first time to look at over 2,000 fragrance compounds used across the global supply chain. We are able to see what demographic groups are exposed to those fragrances, what products they are mostly exposed from and flavorings and fragrances are used across foods and consumer products and personal care products and cosmetics. So you have to have the total aggregate exposure, as we call it. And we're able to see what body part even, or what route of exposure is the most, um, is contributing to most. So, so essentially what we've done is we created a data science platform for, for companies to share data, work together, and then uh, extract insights. So our job in Creme Global is to join up the three points of this triangle. And it looks very straightforward in terms of you want to get the right data sources, however you can get access to those. You want to create the models, mathematical models and data science. And that's where we're very strong in Creme Global, is creating these kinds of algorithms and models where we're joining up data sets that were never really designed to be, to be joined in the first place. And they might come from different sources and different formats. And we're creating models that people can trust so the decision makers at the end of the day can make better decisions around their products, their formulations. So it's very important um, that uh, everybody understands the data, the models, the methods, and they can trust, them, trust the output. So some of the challenges in the data science industry and in, in general, and this goes across food and all other sectors as we see it in Crown Global. Firstly, data is so critical um, that if you don't work hard to aggregate all of this data and put it together into an application, your, your model is not going to be very useful. Um, at the start, we had this food, food risk analysis web-based software, and we expected our clients to go and download the data. You know, open data sets, maybe from the US and Haynes or CDC in America. The data was there. We expected them, well, if they wanted the US data, they could simply get it and upload it. It was pretty straightforward. After a few months of watching nobody really uploading any data, we decided quickly we better start putting the data in because our model was going to be useless. So we've kind of quickly realized that we have to curate, validate, and install the data so that people can trust it. Maybe the barrier was that they didn't know if they downloaded the data and uploaded it, was it correct? Was there any errors in that data? So we've, we've started to do that on behalf of our clients. So no data, no product was the first lesson. The second one is still hugely prevalent. And this is the, the workflow of data science and data analytics in companies, where people are emailing around very complex Excel files that have been built up over many years. Nobody really knows who, who edited this Excel file, who created the little macros in the Excel file. The person who created that might have left. But they're still using it, you know, click and go every week, you know, churning out numbers. Um, you know, uh, who's got the latest version? If you stored it on the share drive, has anyone changed it or deleted a cell? Maybe there's huge operational risk with that. And we need to move past that in the, in the industry to get much more robust around the way we do data analytics. The, the team aspect of creating these kind of models, you might see on LinkedIn these unicorn data scientists that can do everything. You're probably not going to find any. I've never come across one in, in 11 years of doing data science in industry. So we, we talk about data science being a team, a team sport in that just to get started in creating these kind of applications, these production quality applications on the cloud that we've created, you need at least six people. You're talking about a really good system engineer who can set up servers and keep the data secure, a back-end developer who can manage that data, connect the data together, do the algorithms efficiently to crunch the data and create results. You need a front-end designer who can make nice interfaces so that people can understand the output of that data. You need a front-end developer who can implement that. You need a data scientist. You need a quality assurance team who is going to check the work of all those guys to make sure they haven't made mistakes and check everything on a test-driven development and a quality basis 
and you need a domain expert. So that's six plus your domain expert. So you guys would be domain experts in the food industry. You may or may not you have a data scientist on your team. You probably have good IT people who are managing your data in a professional way in your SQL databases. So you might only need to plug in one or two parts of this chain into your team in order to start really using the data in your, in your, uh, in your systems. The communication is so, so important and we spend a lot of time writing scientific papers and presenting at conferences so that people can trust our results. We work with the regulators, the uh, UK Food Standards Agency, European Food Safety Authority, Irish Government, US equivalents have all, have all used our models in real regulatory um, cases and they're using them on an ongoing basis. So in order for them to understand our models, they need to, we need to write scientific papers and become recognized in our field. So communication is so valuable. You can create the best analytics model, but if the end decision maker doesn't understand it or doesn't trust it, they'll never use it in real, in real decision making. So you might, may as well have not bothered. So communication is such a valuable aspect of data science these days. Um, deep domain knowledge needed. It takes a long time be to become a really um, strong data scientists. It's not something you can learn over a, week, a weekend on Coursera. So data scientists have kind of grown up through college playing with data or maybe at home playing with data over a number of years or in, in work. You know, it takes a number of years to really start to get a feel for data. And big data is getting quite dangerous. You know, people can extract all sorts of correlations and hypotheses from big data that may not have any cause and effect. So you have to kind of have strong scientists and use the scientific method like, here's my hypothesis, here's the data I'm going to use to test it, and then here's my answer. It looks pretty good, but is it robust? If I do a few other tweaks or scenarios, is my answer still strong and holding up? So it's a real scientific process needed. And finally, the ad, ad hoc development process. This is just general software engineering, which, you know, these processes have been solved for a long time in the software engineering world, like teamwork, scrum, agile, test-driven development, quality assurance, that's all standard in software engineering, but in data, sciences, in data science you still often have one genius sitting over there with his PC for years on end, writing reams and reams of code, not really collaborating with anyone, and you know, if he hands that code over to the team, they don't understand it, they don't know if there's bugs in it, so it's a real, um, it, data science needs to mature in the way that data science code is written, and, and that's starting to happen. And let me tell you about a solution that we believe is, is enabling this to happen. So the solution, again, for companies in, in, in lots of domains is, is teamwork and collaboration. So you don't necessarily need to hire six people in order to get started. You, can, you, have, your, you have your IT systems in place. You, you can tap into the network of data science expertise. See, you don't need to hire a data scientist, and I'll show you how that can work. So um, you want to connect your data with, with the right data sources, with the right people, in order to make better decisions. And what we've done over the years in Creme Global is we've been doing this for a number of different clients in the food and chemical sector. And even as a data science company, we found that we have other data sources in our own business, like our own social media data, our own CRM data, our own operations data, all in different, in different silos. So in a sense, even as a data science company, we're finding it hard to connect up all of our own data science, our, our own data sources, and even along with all the data sources that we're managing on behalf of our clients. So over the years, we've rebuilt our cloud-based platform probably three times, learned from all the mistakes we've made. So we have our own you know, proprietary software that we've built using a lot of open source, modern technologies in the cloud and on the web. So we built this in a way that we needed in order to help us to deliver the models we need to deliver on our behalf and on behalf of our clients. And what it is is a platform in the cloud now which allows you to connect to data sources very quickly and easily. So the features of this platform are connectivity. So we recognize that all the data isn't in your SQL database. Some of it might be in your Twitter account. Other bits might be in your CRM. Other bits might be on the open data in the web, you know, presented by the UK government or the Central Statistics Office. So you need to be able to connect to that data wherever it may sit. Secondly, you need to be able to build your analytics quickly and easily. And we've put together a kind of a building block approach using Python, which is a very powerful and um, complete, I suppose, data science language now. Um, so we chose Python as our basis, but what we've done is we've added some libraries on top of Python so that you can pull together these models and connect them into data very quickly and easily. So projects that would have taken six months in the past, we can literally do in, in days or weeks. 
analyzing data because it is, is all what it's all about, so a lot of functionality built in there. And because it's web-based, collaboration is built in and allows you to deploy models on the cloud quickly and easily in order to collaborate. So if you're a data science uh, group within an organization, you can quickly uh, create a model, deploy it on, on the cloud, share it out with your, client, your clients or your colleagues, be they your suppliers, your internal stakeholders, in a very quick and easy way in order for them to access that um, analytics. If you have another team that's managing the data, you can collaborate with them as well, so you all work together. So that's why we talk about data science being a team sport. And this platform is called Expert Models, and in, in a few minutes I'll just show you what it looks like. So the beauty about this and, um, is that you don't need to install any software. Literally go to a browser, log in, you're up and running straight away. You don't need to install any SQL databases, you don't need to install Python, you don't need to install um, Linux, you don't need to know, know anything about servers or Amazon, it's all just done. So that's great. I used to know how to install all those things and I don't anymore, so I like to just uh, get started now and do the analytics that I need to do. So basically, kind of like what Salesforce CRM did for the CRM market, they took it out of the kind of enterprisey, heavy uh, enterprise systems and they just put it on the web so everybody can access it and you can collaborate. So once you log in, you immediately have access to all of your data. And you can see here, there's different things. There's my data, which is private. You have shared data. Uh, the, the mouse isn't showing up on your screen, but on the top left, you have my data, shared data, and my EM data. So it's collaborative from the start. You have data, models, and activity. You can see all your team activity. You can collaborate, and you can share data, and you can also keep your own data private. You can plug this into your professionally managed SQL databases. You can plug it into your third-party suppliers using APIs. So immediately, you get all the data into one place, which is the, the great start. Um, so this is kind of designed to manage large data sets, which are hard to manage in Excel. Um, so you can have millions, hundreds and thousands, and millions of records, and you can use those in your models. When I go into my profile, I see my team. Um, all my team are there. Again, a bit like um, Salesforce CRM or the modern web-based CRM packages, it's really important to see who's good at what, who's managing what data, what analytics have they created, and you can see all this through your team and your analytics. So the way we're working with clients with this platform is we will either work with them to get this up and running, and we will create analytics, plug it in, plug it into their data, and then hand it over, and that leaves them with a team of people who can manage data, who can run models that we've created, and if they have the data science expertise, or they want to engage with another data scientist who may be in a university or, or nearby, they can start collaborating on this platform and upgrade those analytics over time. So it's really collaborative, and that's why we call it a, a team sport. So, Web, the web is just great for this, um, and it's become so robust. At the, we've created a number of example models, and these are just really to illustrate the power of Python these days. So there's things like random forest classifiers. I, d I didn't know what that was, so that's why I asked the team to put that in, so I could figure out what it actually was. And basically, it's kind of a machine learning algorithm which gets large data sets and can classify it. So really powerful for your customers, you know, incidents that might happen in your production line, you can tell, tell this algorithm, well, group them together into similar groups, and also, it'll cluster your customers, great for marketing campaigns, etc. You know, we've kind of Monte Carlo risk analysis type stuff, we've got sales forecasts, we've got our, some of our own creme food, um, which is population-based intake modeling, so looking at different demographic groups, what foods they're consuming, um, what, what, what happens if you change the sodium in this food to a lower amount? What's the impact on the population? We've got a European project called Bacchus in here. We've got some sugar consumption data, sentiment analysis. And these are just examples, just to illustrate what's possible. But this platform is totally agnostic to whatever analytics and data you want to deploy in it. So anything that's you know, useful to do in data analytics these days can be easily and quickly deployed. So what this platform gives you is you don't need um, a guy, our systems guy or girl, who knows how to manage servers. You don't need to install any software. You can plug in all of your existing data and we'll help you do that. And if you have a data scientist, they can start creating models directly in this platform using Python and using our libraries. So to create a model, really all you need is to 
put your data in the platform, create some code, which if you have um, Python expertise, which is very available these days uh, coming through college, so that's why we did choose Python. If you have that, you can create them yourself. If you don't, we'll collaborate with you to do it or find somebody who can help you do it. And then you simply create a front end to your model or an input, so you specify, well, what are the inputs to my model? And this is all done through drag and drop, and you can hardly see this, but this says um, height, weight, age, gender and activity level. So this is a kind of a health model, a BMI and BMR, body mass index and basal metabolic rate model. You deploy that and you're ready to go. You can then run your model and get your results. And the results can be PDFs, tables, statistics, and all of that is just controlled by the model at the back end. So you can go from data to predictive models within literally hours if you have a Python expertise or if you don't have it, you find someone who does they'll get a model up and running that you can use within your organization in this kind of collaborative space quickly and easily. Here's a model we created for the food sector, um, a company called Hawkins, which is a listeria growth predictor. Um, the difference between using their um, material or, or um, their ingredients rather than the standard, and they use this as a tool um, that they can collaborate with their customers with. So they can go out to a customer, they can say, well, what formulation do you want to use? They plug it in, they run it, and they predict the benefits of that. This is one of our other projects on health, uh, cardiovascular benefits from food bioactives. And again, a lot of data in the background here, but a simple interface where you can plug in, well, what population are you interested in? What foods? What, what, um, what ingredients? And it runs the model. So that's, that's um, what we're doing. Um, we're really interested in, in talking to people around food data, analytics, and how we can help organizations to start this collaboration, as we say, get the team sport going. We're happy to be part of that team, or we're happy for you if you have the complete team in place to, to engage with you to help um, collaborate and work together to build better insights from your analytics and from your data. So that's me. I don't think we do questions now, but I'll be here for the rest of the day. My colleague Connor is here as well, so please feel free to find us afterwards, and I'd love to, love to hear your feedback and have a chat. Thank you very much.